Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing. Oh, I timed that just right. I should have stopped it there. <laughs> totally by accident. All right. We're going to turn the music off. If you want to hear some music, put on some music. My name is Kurt. I'm a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And uh, I was going to say today, but it is tonight. And this is this is the most light you're gonna get. <laughs> it's too late at night to turn on my studio light. So just imagine a super handsome artist, you know. And uh, this is uh, this is part three of uh, this thing. This is for Vault 2022 banner. Their new con banner. It's going to be eight feet by eight feet. No, no pressure, no pressure there. And uh, first shoe, you are first. Congratulations, you get the uh, whatever comes with that. Uh, go to bed, Kurt. No, it's not really my bedtime. I, I, I go to bed late. I go to bed at like two a.m. usually, so I've got a good four hours. <laughs> and uh, hey, AK Comic, welcome back. So um. Anyway, we're in the final, uh, most of this is done already. We're in the final uh, tweaking stage of this and uh, and painting details and all that kind of stuff. Most of this is already, you know, where it's going to be. So uh, we're just going to start tightening things up. And uh, if you have uh, questions, comments, concerns, uh, whatever, let me know and uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, about coloring in general, no back seating. No backseat coloring. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ask questions anytime. Yeah, I gotta change that. There we go. We're good. So how are y'all? You're up past your bedtime. Well, I, I am sorry about that. All right, so. We're gonna pick up. Uh, I haven't really left. I don't really leave this off anywhere in particular. I've got. Um, yeah, we're just gonna kind of move person to person here, and then we'll see if there's anything else we need to do with them, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I think I want to get a little uh, 
uh, uh, gooier on this uh, monster tentacle thing. So a few like brighter spots in here should help like we just want to make it look like it's wet and nasty. That is, that is, that is probably an album title somewhere. How am I doing? I, I'm doing really good, actually. Um, uh, about an, about half an hour ago, like something in my foot like snapped very loudly, and it scared the crap out of me. But now I now my back doesn't have as much tension in it, so there's that. There's a tentacle right next to the girl. Yeah, don't make it weird. <laughs> no, uh, this is uh, this character is from a book called Heart Eyes. I did a cover for it. Um, that's the important thing about it, of course, is I did a cover for it. But uh, but no, um, it's uh, I don't know. I haven't read it yet, but it looks amazing. And uh, I, I have I got some reference art when they for the cover and. Uh, I'm like, I gotta read this when I have time, which will be like August. <laughs> K K Z, is that how you say your name? Kazi? K Z? I'm sorry I'm butchering your name, but hello to you. Yeah, this is uh this is probably this is one of the most detailed things I think I've ever done. I think that's fair to say. I'm pretty sure that's fair to say. But uh, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm enjoying this uh, this process here. But yeah, it, these kind of sessions are weird because you know you'll you'll look. You'll look at it. Uh, oh, I didn't turn my phone off. Um, like zoomed out, you won't even really even notice differences in this, you know, probably. But when you get close, I'm imagining, I mean, if this thing is going to be eight feet tall, like some of these people are life size. So, so I'm thinking, yeah, let's make sure it's detailed. Let's make sure we've got our bases covered here. We don't want anybody to look at this and be like, wow, that color is really like phoned it in in that little section. The inside of her ankle is not detailed at all. Now, we're not going to go too crazy with this, but. But yeah, these, these, these kind of things are fun. I, I used to not know what to do with uh, big groups covers i never did i never felt confident in, in that stuff at all and um i mean but but this has been it's been like a learning experience i, I think i've i've picked up some stuff with this one that i don't even know if i'm ready to, I, that i can't articulate quite yet now you're like well what what'd you hear but um no i, I caught myself like on a on a uh, gasp normal layer for like a long time last night and realized that like oh I think I can pick the colors that I want now <laughs> like you know for this particular canvas anyway because everything I'm trying to pick from the canvas as much as possible um, so that I'm not like introducing new colors at this point because uh, I don't really need any new colors at this point. But yeah, like, I'm... I was watching... What is that guy's name? Hello there to you too, Paul. How's it going? Welcome back. Um... Honestly, I've seen that most people don't notice the tiny details. It's helped me get past my worries about coloring things. Oh, that's true. That's totally true. Um, but there, there is also 
there's definitely a contingent that like detail impresses and um i i've i've proven this <laughs> through some con print sales and stuff over the year just like if you put like 30 characters on a color people will line up for it i don't know why exactly i mean but there's something about just the insane amount of stuff i think that, that people just get into and uh but anyway, uh, I, I don't, uh, but if this with something up close, like this is one of those things where it needs to grab you from like 50 feet away. You know what I mean? And so I actually, uh, after talking with Tim, the designer of this thing uh, today, uh, Tim Daniel, you guys know Tim. Um, he reminded me because I forgot that there's another part of this banner that has colors in it already. Uh, so yeah, the colorist forgot to check if there were other colors on the banner. I'm a professional. So it was like, oh, well, it, well I immediately I knew exactly what he meant because I didn't have almost, I didn't have much of those colors in there really at all. And um, this is a good lesson in and of itself, you know, uh, if, but I realized that, and he realized, we both knew as soon as I looked at it, it was all unique colors, so it didn't tie into the existing stuff at all. That's the long and short of it. So what I ended up doing was picking one of those colors <laughs> and uh, using that one instead for the background. And I was already had, already had like cool leaning stuff and already had some stuff that was like in that ballpark but I wasn't being intentional with it. It just happened to be about like that. And so, um, move that over there. And, uh, so anyway, after that, it's like, all right, well, let, let me do some tweaks on this. And so we made that blue. I changed some of the reflections on the hand here to blue instead of the, like the background color they were before. And then, uh, that's about it. But anyway, uh, I'll probably introduce a little more of that blue through it, throughout here. Very, very, very subtly uh, in, in a few places. I'm not really going to mess with this a whole lot color-wise. Because I think it's it's pretty close. I wonder if it feels like they're getting more for their money because it's a bunch of characters. Oh yeah, probably so. But... Um, but yeah, the background works with that those colors. Like if you're trying to understand why that that happens or why that works, it's just like the example I like to give is uh, I've got a cat. Well, uh, my cat has this this thing, and and my middle brother actually both uh, are very blue eyed creatures, both of them. And uh, so when they wear a blue shirt, it's like their eyes become neon blue, you know. Actually, Jaffa's eyes are green. They're light green. It's the same principle. And, uh, where was I? I was on him. And we did there. And I really like these anime-looking characters. I can't remember what book that is. Where was I? I was up there. Here we go. This is where we left off. I tell myself. But anyway, when they wear a shirt like that, that's really, uh, you know, in the same color family as their eyes. Like, and you guys have probably noticed this. Like, it really makes their eyes really pop. And so, uh, why can't I find the color that I want? There we go. And so it's the same principle. Like, I, I want that logo to pop over there in the, you know, in its area of this thing. And, um... So putting a little blue on the other side helps to set that off and it ties this piece into the logo colors. So there's not like, the logo is not too unique and then this doesn't feel like it's clashing or anything like that. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. How's everybody doing? Hey Aqua, how's it going? Thank you for your membership, man. And uh, we have Will here from uh, End After End. If you didn't know. 
This is a book I'm actually coloring. I've colored a bunch of these people in covers. If you weren't here last night, I won't rehash all that, but I was I was happy to see that uh, there's only a handful of books that I haven't done colors for on, on this thing, at least one time. So I'm I'm glad Vault likes me is is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Apparently. And I get to do stuff like this too. So, but yeah, I'm just I'm, I'm adding a little bit more depth, trying to bring up the 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 uh, the detail level to be about the same everywhere. Because I feel like, I mean, some of these are intentionally simple and like like I don't like these characters I did in lassoy stuff because you know real card cut and grad stuff because it just so they felt like they needed. Uh, like on this guy's mask or whatever. It's like I really wanted to be able to see and like you can tell what it's made of. It's what my goal was. So, but I didn't treat every character that way. And it seems to fit this particular piece because all of these vault characters and all these all these books have a lot of, uh, they're all very different characters. <laughs> very different. So... fun stuff but yeah if you guys have questions about what I'm doing or have coloring stuff or whatever or you want to lurk either way let me know or don't let me know I guess is the point I'm making <laughs> but uh but yeah this has been super fun which I needed this week looks so great Thank you, Elizabeth. I actually put another hour into this on... It, I did it online last night. Uh, it was like... Uh, until about 2 a.m. or so, I think. Maybe a little bit after. So I did about an hour of work in between. Sorry, I, I didn't anticipate that last night, but... That's just sometimes how that... How that goes down. When, you're, when the mood strikes. <laughs> and sometimes it strikes at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, do you have a favorite character you've colored? That's a good question. I mean, I feel like I should say Batman because honestly, like, I don't know. I was, I read a lot of Marvel stuff growing up. I was an X-Man, Spider-Man kid. And uh, I'm using a, a texture brush here in the highlight color to just make it look like there's more stuff in here than I did. And uh, it really does a good job of making more detail than you really are creating. <laughs> but uh, what was I talking about? Just that quick. Somebody will remind me in a second. Sorry, I took a muscle relaxer earlier. I think it is kicking in. So my back has been... Favorite character of color. Yeah, I think it would have to be Batman. Uh, he is like... That's honestly even still. That's kind of what DC is for me, is Batman. Like, I, nev I never could get into s to Superman. I, I, I know that's like sacrilege... And I don't know if I'm supposed to say that out loud. But yeah, I just, I, I couldn't, he, he he did too much, you know? He's got he's got too many powers. And, uh, <laughs> gonna, uh, sorry if that offends anyone. And, uh, so that was all DC was. It was just Batman. Like, I knew Batman. I knew his rogues gallery and all that. Mostly, I actually was introduced more from the, the animated series than I was the uh, than I ever was the book. Same thing with X Men. I I didn't read X Men until uh, I didn't know I didn't really get into comics and really until uh, the X Men cartoon came out. And that's still like to this day like uh, those '90s X Men are just. I don't think it gets much better than that. But yeah, DC, uh, going back to Batman, like, and now I'm pretty confused about Batman lately. There's like a hundred Batmans. Um, there's just, his, I don't know any of the good guys. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, this is Ron Chan's pencil. It's free on his Gumroad. Um, I really like this pencil. I've been using it a ton lately. He looks about the same color as his shirt, which he happened to look that way on the cover that I saw him on when I first flatted this. But I think I want to brighten that shirt. Because right now it pretty much looks like it's the same color. That's his skin. I'm not going to make it too bright, but I'll brighten it up a little bit. There we go. Do we need to shift it some kind of way? Yeah, it'll cool it off a little bit. That works for me. I like what Superman represents in its character. Yeah, and that's really what that character, I mean, that's what he's all about, is, and uh, as a kid, you know, I didn't pick that up, and then as an adult, I don't know, I just, I, I've gone back and read a lot of the stuff, which I like. Alrighty, um... I want to pull him off the background a little bit here on that side of his leg. I think I want that to read a little bit better. Yeah, I do. So we'll go grab one of those colors on him. Get back on my layer on top. And do a little uh, mystical, magical lighting that's uh, highly convenient to what I need. <laughs> yeah, for anybody that gets too caught up when I throw out random guidelines and about lighting, just, just remember that uh, what looks best trumps all the rest of that stuff. <laughs> Everything has to serve the story, as they say. You know, one thing Clip does that I've, like, never really gotten used to is the, uh... If you have a selection and you click in the selection, I think Photoshop cancels a selection. It must, because I am constantly like tap, 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 like trying to cancel a selection. And it, it just doesn't work. And then I have to go outside the selection. And I remember, but I'm pretty, I'm, I'm wondering if Photoshop does that. I don't really care enough to check right now, but I wonder if that's why I have that habit though. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be. Your coloring of this piece is worth watching several times just to study. So many great insights. Uh, well, well, tell me, give me an example. I'm not even being funny right now. Like, be any, I mean, give me an example of what something that resonated for you. And I'll, I'll make like a video of that. And I'll go back and watch this section of the chat. So yeah, anybody that's like learned something to, on any of these videos at all, let me know. That kind of stuff's hard for me to pin down. That would help me a ton. And if it's just a general whatever, I get that too. You might be like, uh, you know, I understand if you couldn't. If it's more of like a feel or a vibe or something. 
His leg does not look round enough. Why doesn't his leg look round enough? Pop quiz. Because this is a big, flat area of color. Because I'm an idiot, I think. And so uh, when, you, when you do that, it makes it look uh, flatter. And so to make it look round, we got to soften this up a little bit. And that helps. It would help too if we did like one little bit of like some highlights right down the center. I don't want this to be like too clean looking though because so I'm making it kind of jaggedy. That's a word. There you go. It looks a little bit rounder now. Uh, da, 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 da. What else do we need to do? We're kind of just jumping around detailing. If you're just joining, welcome. And we did a lot of stuff on him last night. I think he's pretty good to go. Although now we have a blue background and I want him to look slimy. We're gonna add a little bit of blue to this outside edge, I think. Because it would reflect whatever is there. With the, uh, with the, the, the Fresnel effect, I think, is the fancy art school term for that. Like the light sort of wrapping around. I think that's even the phrase the photographers use, isn't it? They call it when things are like light wrapped. Is, is that, or I might be, I might be mixing up my movie terms. I study a lot of like cinematography. And I can't remember which. There's some kind of term. There's something to do with that. I learned one time that I forgot. I think they call it light wrapped. When like the light goes all the way around both sides, you get like a core shadow in the middle. The designer, uh, or the or the logo designer, and the the graphic designer for this was here most of the time last night, and I, he really needs this cover. And I'm sure he's, he he, he I think he he subscribes, so he's gonna be like, you uh, need to hurry up and. Uh... <laughs> it looks good. Send it. No, I'm kidding. He wouldn't do that. I have a question. I just finished a six page short. Nice. I've done the pencils, ink, and colors in Procreate. What would be the best type of file to export to the letterer and so on? Um, I don't know. I don't remember what Procreate can export. Um, I like TIFFs are very popular for that. Um, I don't know if it exports those or not though. I really don't. But uh, something like that. Just it doesn't compress very much. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, working smart versus working hard. Uh, that's one of the best topics seeing artists do. Yep. Uh, like this flat color not looking around right now. It looks so fine to me until you mentioned it. Specifically, the choice for the background really made me appreciate why this works. Well, I appreciate that, man. What makes it difficult for me is deciding what blending mode you want for a layer, as a blending mode can shift the colors of my pieces. Yeah, like, blending modes are very cool. Um, it really helps to understand the underlying theory behind them and understand uh, color in general, um, color theory, all that stuff, because 
they 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 easily and, and i'm i'm a, as guilty as this as anybody they they easily become crutches you know what i mean and i i, I had somebody the other day uh in my discord <laughs> that was like i've tried all the blending modes and i can't find the color that i want <laughs> i'm like well stop using blending modes put it on normal and pick the color you want you know what i mean like it, it, you can kind of fall into the trap of it being about the tech in the layer uh, making choices for you, um, which is totally fine if you understand what's, you know, the color theory behind those choices creatively. Um, so as I, I, I'm just saying that as sort of a general warning. I'm not saying you're doing that or whatever is going on. But, uh, but yes, blending modes absolutely shift your colors. Um, and the choice to use a certain blending mode depends on what sort of effect you're going for, you know? So, um, I, I really don't use a ton of them. Uh, uh, I usually stick with hard light or, uh, uh, like overlay. I use a good bit. Um, I very much sort of treat my pages as if they're like blender scenes or something, you know what I mean? Where it's like everything is on a separate layer. Most lights are on a separate layer. Um, generally speaking, uh, this one I'm just doing on a normal mode layer because I've already got all the colors I need in here. Um, and, uh, so all I'm going to do it now is going for the, you know, going for the values that I'm looking for or whatever. Um, but yeah, just, uh, that's my only, that's my word of, of warning about the blending mode thing. It's, it's a very common problem. And I'm sure it has nothing to do with those crazy colorists on YouTube that do multiple videos about things like hard light mode. I mean, who would do that? I mean... <laughs> I'm sure that has nothing, nothing to do with it. Alrighty. This jacket's meant to be shiny. We need to put a layer of color over here. Shiny stuff's going to reflect more. Alrighty. And some of these... Um, I was going to say there. Some of these something or other. <laughs> I'm going to soften up some of this a little bit. Not all of it, but... And then we need to go... We need like a good highlight color to get that Pantene look going on here. Uh, where are we? Is that is that even relevant anymore? Like uh, that was the big when I back when I watched TV with commercials it was all about the Pantene shampoo. I'm probably dating myself slightly. Oh, let me tell you what I did today. For the first time in my life, I lost a page. And of course, it was the busiest page in the book. <laughs> One of the most detailed panels I've ever colored. 
been 10 years as a professional colorist. It did not save because I didn't save it. It is completely my fault. And I have a really stupid reason for it, too. I, uh... Clip Studio has a built-in autosave, whatever you call it. And that was on. But it only works if you've saved once. I think you have to, like, if you're using the PSD, which I am, uh, you have to save. And then it'll start auto-saving. But I forgot that initial save for some reason. It's like the first thing I do when I open a page, like just out of habit. I make some changes, blah, blah, blah you know, save it. Th this was like, oh man, there was five, maybe four or five hours in this page. And there's nothing that I hate more than redoing something. I, 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 it's like my biggest possible pet peeve <laughs> is, is having to redo something. And this, I mean... I cannot explain to y'all how, how upset that I was. Oh my goodness. It was, uh, I was just so mad. <laughs> I, I dug around in the autosave files for, uh, uh, for Clip Studio and I found all sorts of pages in there. But they were all old pages. <laughs> And I just, oh man, it just, it, that hurts, man. That hurts. I've never done it. Like everything that could have failed, failed. Like the Clip Studio auto thing didn't work. And then, uh, of course, Dropbox wasn't saving because there wasn't like multiple files like it normally does because there there uh, there wasn't that initial save file i just opened up the flats and that was it sounds frustrating oh man i'm like i'm going to wait 2 days before trying that page again cuz i just oh it was so much work it was so much work <laughs> oh well it happens i guess <laughs> I'd have yeeted my PC out the window. I, dude, I, I, I wanted to. <laughs> I just couldn't get to it. You know, it's all stuck down there. No, I, I, I didn't. I didn't. It wasn't quite that bad. But yeah, no, I, yeah, that's rough, dude. I don't wish that on anybody. I didn't even know that initial save was a thing. I, I don't think it is. Um, I'm actually meant to be working in the clip format on this because I, I, I usually, on on bigger files, it, it operates a little bit better. So I'm going to save this PSD, actually. I'm going to switch over to a clip file. I'm starting to wonder if the autosave functions with PSDs. I mean, surely it does. I would have noticed that I thought at some point. But now I'm wondering if it works at all with PSD files. You know? I don't know. It's probably easy to look up. I'll look it up later. Unless one of y'all know. But yeah, let me save this while we're talking about it. All right, we should be good now. <laughs> all righty. And all of this sort of flowing uh, stuff, really, I want to keep this well in the background. Uh, it's There's nothing here that needs to stand out. I just, I, but it will stand out if there's no detail. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, at least some, it's just a big brown spot, you know, so I don't really want that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is like sort of fade her into all of this stuff. And uh, hopefully that, uh, like I say, I, really, I don't really want much detail at all on this part. I don't, I don't want it to draw attention really at all. And I think that's also a good place to throw a little bit of this background. To really offset uh, Barbaric Man. I can't think of his name all of a sudden. <laughs> The guy with the axe. And my anatomy is not... That kind of goes that way. Then that way. How are y'all doing? What are y'all up to tonight? Where? What am I doing? What am I doing next? Uh, he uh, he looks pretty good. I don't really think there's much else I want to do on him. I guess we could take a little bit of that blue. You really won't see much of it. But that'll separate his arm from his torso. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's go back over to here. I think we're. Let's see, what color should that be? That's in the ballpark. Don't leave any jagged areas through here. This is a smudge tool or the blending tool. I don't even remember which one. Uh, what is that? Whoops. Blending tool, yeah. I can't remember. I think there's a smudge tool also? Or am I mixing that up with something else? Alrighty. Uh, let's do... I like her being cartoony. I'm probably not going to do a ton here. A few more... Uh, a few more little specular highlights, maybe... Gotta, gotta have the healthy hair look there.
sorry, I forgot I'm supposed to be talking. <laughs> yeah, this this is all just uh, this stage is kind of the mindless stage for me. I can like I just turn my brain off and forget what's going on. <laughs> but uh, what was I watching? I, I mean, sorry, this story earlier and got sidetracked by a comment. I was watching. Um, uh, it's like Arcturus or something on YouTube. Um, YouTube artist Art. Let me try Arcturus. That doesn't sound. That's not it. What is that guy's name? He was doing uh, a bunch of. Uh, he does a lot of detailed paintings. I'm trying to find this guy's channel because uh, he does. He used to do a lot of time lapses. And uh, I learned so much about color watching this dude. And I only subscribed to 250 channels. What is good grief? Uh, I'll know his name when I see it. <laughs> I really want to uh, recommend this guy to, to y'all. Uh, his stuff is weird. The art itself is very weird, very dark, uh, which, but I like. It's just it's very strange. A lot of uh, skeletons and people grabbing skeletons and skeletons grabbing on people and it's weird. But what is that guy's channel? He hasn't made a video in forever. Does anybody app tourist? Some, I'm like somebody's probably in the chat already figured this out. Nope, app tourist. I think is how you say that. Yeah, he's got, uh, yeah, Apturus illustrations. I'm going to copy this into the chat. He's still posting them about once a month, I guess. There we go. But, uh, he was, uh, on one of his time lapses, he was, he was in like the, this stage, you know, he's in like the detailing stage of whatever's going on. And um, I noticed, I mean, of course, I've always thought, you know, we'll detail um, more in the places you want the audience to notice, obviously. Like, focal points tend to be where we um, focus most of our the time we spend doing details. And um, why is that? This is a weird. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a strange color gamut right now. I'm, I'm barely in the uh, CMYK color game in here. But one thing I noticed watching him, I'm sorry I'm taking forever to tell this story, it's late. <laughs> but watching him though, he was detailing in those places, but he was also focusing it on turns, is what I would call it. Like anywhere where there was like an angle that changed anywhere that a plane turned into a different plane and I noticed that just the smallest little uh, you know right here this is not a great example but like the smallest little hint of white along these edges um, and this they're pretty close to the rest of the color so it's not a great example um, but if like this was a lot darker up to that point you would notice it like this but putting in those those uh, little shifts of detail in the transitional is that the way I would describe that I'm not really sure what I would call it but yeah in, in little places where anything where it transitions or shifts or whatever and after noticing it of course it was it seems obvious well yeah that's the way to do that <laughs> but I had never really consciously thought of it that way and I I, I mean it's something that I did at times, like just obviously because it's just what people normally do doing art, but he was so very specifically using it in that way. It's like he went around the painting basically doing it, and it just made it made so much sense to me. And I still do that to this day. I'm just blending one side of this a little bit. 
some of this stuff's a little too sharp for my taste. Let's do a good old little shot here from Money Shot. I'm going to just desaturate that red on top of him, and that'll pull that back cooler. And make sure he is very reflective. Anytime I want to do a big soft area, you may have noticed, I usually do not bother with a texturing brush at all. Just go straight to the soft airbrush. <laughs> You also mentioned some great points on how specular highlights dictate the texture of a material more than anything else. It was nice to hear it in one sentence like that. <laughs> that yeah, like, yeah, that, that was, when I figured that out a couple years ago, that was one of those things that was like a big level up, eye opener, light bulb kind of moment. Like, I mean, obviously that's not the only thing, but uh, what he's talking about, if you, if you weren't here, um, uh, I was talking about how specular highlights really sort of dictate what the surface feels like, you know? Because it's like the second that I put these little, you know, this little bright spot here, it's like instantly you're like, oh, that's a different texture than, or it, it, uh, yeah, a different texture than what's around it. Or at least, uh, yeah, different. I mean, than, than all, all of this stuff. It's just like her... Uh, uh, well, like, well, I think I was talking about it on this guy, like his specular highlights versus, you know, the ones that are on her are very different. Um, cause I want him to feel wet and disgusting. Uh, you know, these characters, not so much. <laughs> this channel is interesting. Subscribe. Yeah. It's all time lapses as far as I know. But uh, you can learn a lot from, from watching those. He does some wacky, wacky stuff with, like, color balance. Excuse me. He gets these very strange palettes um, that feel like they're alien. Like, like no human would decide on that palette. Uh, I mean that as a compliment to the guy, too. But uh, he, he loves, he uses a lot of red and green, actually, now that I think about it. Which this one uses a, God, a lot of. But he has a, a lot of uh, really good anatomy. Like, even just the way he constructs paintings, I've, I've sort of uh, borrowed. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. This is coming along, coming along. Boy, that sounded country, coming along. 
the closer I get to, uh, the closer I got to realism, the more I wanted to do cartoons. Looking at his work reminds me of how overwhelming it can get. Oh yeah, his stuff has, uh, there's a lot of work. He puts hours and hours into those things. That's one thing that I had to like get used to again. Like when I started working on some of my own paintings recently, it's like, oh man, I've been at this for four hours and I've barely, you know, did anything. It's like, it's not quite the same, th same thing as coloring where you're knocking out a page every couple hours, you know. Got to save yourself some, give myself some slack. <laughs> Uh, I, uh, let's see, uh, this question. I do have an actual question. Do you suffer back problem? Because how you handle them if so? Because <laughs> I figure out how to keep myself posture right in my seat lest my pain escalates. Uh, yeah, man, that, that's a whole, uh, we could do a whole stream on <laughs> my, uh, anatomy issues. <laughs> um, y to answer the, the short answer to your question, yes, um, uh, I've been drawing since I was two. Has a lot to do with it. Uh, my posture throughout all of that period was not great. Uh, it had a massive effect on um, my back and my everything. It's not even my back, it's like my body. Uh, so yeah, I'm kind of an evangelist now for if it bothers you, you need to start handling it now. It will not get better as you get older, <laughs> unless you unless you deal with it. Um, your body will sort of let you hang yourself, though. Like it'll let you go well and you know, well into your thirties, forties before. It's like, hey, remember that time when you never sat the right way for the first thirty-five years of your life? Yeah, we're gonna cash in on that now. <laughs> so. uh Yeah. <laughs> if you're a decade early, uh, my probably has something to do with the fact that you are in that generation that grew up with a cell phone or with an iPad or, or whatever from a very, very younger age anyway. Um, I feel bad for this youngest generation. I don't think they even, I mean, there's going to be an epidemic. An epidemic of people with massive issues because yeah there's there's like there's nothing worse than just hanging your head over the rest of your body or 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 doing this number where you're like well you guys can't see me very well where you're like hanging out way out in front of your back oh i could preach on this stuff for hours <laughs> So I won't. Yeah, you hang forward too much. Yep, start strengthening your back. Start working on all that stuff. When I say your back, like your entire, like do everything that involves your posterior chain. Anything that is the opposite of holding something. <laughs> That's why I got a standing desk. Standing desks are great, but you still stand all day holding something. Like, the way our bodies are wired, you can almost think of it. I'll, this guy is a great example. I, like, this is going to be, and I'm gonna working on an art project to explain all this. That's, that's for another day. But um, <laughs> let me show you real quick. And this is an anatomy lesson at the same time. So uh, I want you to imagine an imaginary line that, like, basically cuts your body in half along about that axis, down the middle of your shoulder, tricep, kind of arm kind of goes under, you can't really see it at that angle, uh, and then it attaches up here, and then it attaches up here. Um, 
So imagine that everything on the back side, uh, I'll do it in this green color, which is not green. All of this stuff on the back. And this is an oversimplification. <laughs> this would come around here a little bit. All of this is on this side of this kind of imaginary line that we were drawing here. On the front side, and we'll use a different color, like blue, all of this stuff, this is a horrible brush for this, all of this stuff are like the muscles that pull you forward, right? They pull you into like the shrimp position, you know? All the muscles that cause you to go into the fetal position, I don't remember what they're called. There's, there's a name for them. But um, all of those are overactive when you're when you are holding something anything cell phones <laughs> pencils tablets whatever but anything you have a grip on which is why so many people are going to have horrific neck issues that are growing up with cell phones in their lap all of these muscles get overactive all right all of these little striations in the muscles, forget the muscles themselves, forget all the individual body parts, it doesn't matter. Think very, very big picture here. Uh, these muscles naturally spiral around your bones because when we went from four-legged creatures to two-legged creatures, that, uh, that joint had to twist. And so that's why like your muscles seem to wrap around the bones like this. There's definitely like a a spiral effect and this is on legs too you know it goes this way wraps around this way so you've got a spiral that you're putting under tension so it's just it's squeezing all of it okay <laughs> whether you realize it or not when you're holding something all right you can't really engage that without engaging your forearm well your forearm muscles don't pull you know without using these muscles up here. And that doesn't pull without attaching to your shoulder, which pulls on your pecs and your abs and your lats. And guess where those attach? Your pelvis and hips and legs. Like if you go to push somebody like with this hand, like you're gonna put that opposite foot back without even thinking about it because you're taking that whole chain to just push against something. So when you're gripping something all the time, these, this entire system is under more tension. And everything in the backside is all stretched out and weak and weaker. Uh, I don't mean weak like not strong. I mean weak relative to the front. Those muscles become uh, what the physical therapists call weak. <laughs> And uh, weak muscles don't hold you up. And so it becomes like a self-fulfilling issue where your head weighs a lot. And so if you're constantly like, you know, with your head forward, you're putting a tremendous amount of stress on your back muscles, which are already under stress from what you're doing already. So um, what I found that is anything that will open up that spiral, uh, there, there's a you, there's a book on this you can buy on Amazon I, I think or from I don't know, like you look up spinal spiralization uh, it's a big word big fancy word but if you look at look that up you'll 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 see these lines that sort of run all over your body uh, these spirals that everybody has um, because it's just it's how our bodies move we we operate in spirals and so all of you know I imagine me drawing circles from the time I was two years old in the same direction. <laughs> and um, all that does, it puts the same repeated, repeated, repeated action on these muscles and they get used to, um, they sort of form pathways that strengthen this. Well, guess what? That tension has to come from somewhere else. <laughs> because your body's a closed system of fascia, which is like a big, the film that covers your muscles. And so if you start tweaking on this side and you're putting tension in this area, you can imagine it as like a suit that's like too tight or something. Well, guess what? That's going to start twisting this on this side. 
it has to come from somewhere. <laughs> you know, you can't just twist. It's like, so if you sprain an elbow, you know, it might be your opposite hip, your other shoulder or something that like is paying for it. You know what I mean? And, um, anyway, that is, a uh, uh, microwave version of, of what I'm trying to explain. But uh, what I have found that helps is anything that opens that up. You know, like if you do like stand up, do a T pose and like turn your elbows, like twist them behind you. Like, try, like that. <laughs> like that sort of engages that whole, you know, spiral thing. Um, but anything that kind of opens that up and allows this to, uh, to strengthen that backside is going to help. been digging this piece awesome looks like i'm late to the group oh yeah we're <laughs> no, i've been at this for a while we try yoga uh i'm doing some stuff it's close to yoga but no it's uh, over stretching is not the issue uh, it, it comes down to like uh, uh balance uh which yoga helps with uh, a little bit but it's not uh it's not like a it's not a cure-all for this uh, it will definitely help Doing, actually, let me rephrase, doing anything, <laughs> anything will help as long as you're just not still and not addressing it. And I'm sorry that I'm completely unable to, like, uh, color and have these discussions at the same time. <laughs> I'll look into it. My chiropractor told me I need to change something because something's working against the adjustments we're doing. Well, yeah, your, your body is just, it's, it's, uh, it's it's likely over you know it's just over overworked um without again you're, you're taking one side of your body and consistently doing the same exact repetitive motion all day and so you're forming you know pathways from your core to that to that stylus you know and if you're not doing something to offset it you're just going to have a bad time this is this is really honestly, and I don't, I, I don't mean this this is haughty, haughtily as it sounds, but this is not well understood by like Western doctors, the Western medical community. The Ch Chinese people figured this out like two thousand years ago. <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, no, I uh, I've learned a lot about that stuff lately, and I've I've. I freaked out a few physical therapists and yeah, there's just, there's a lot of people that really don't seem to under, I didn't understand it, how tightly wired a body is to itself. Ah, da, 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 da. I don't know. I don't know how bright that character's eyes light up, but I think they light up. All right, we're in the home stretch. Uh, spinal spiralization, the new science of back pain. Uh, th that's not the one I have. The one that I have is from somebody in uh, like Prague like a doctor in Prague or something. And, uh, I think he invented it though, or like, or like, or not invented it, but like discovered it. But yeah, there might be some other people that are doing it now too. But like, that'll be, if, if it doesn't, if people catch on, it it should catch on that like i don't even i don't even know if the last physical therapist I asked about it had not even heard of spiralization and i don't know if that's i don't know how uh, you know who knows <laughs> there's there seems to be a lot of a lot of uh, practitioners that are not familiar with it and i think it's like the secret to how bodies work
and yes, I realize how I sound right now about that, but I, I do think, I actually, yes, I do know better. <laughs> it's my body. I can feel it. I've seen, I've seen the results. I don't know any other 40 year olds that grow two inches <laughs> at 40 in height. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, chiropractors honestly are about as effective as like cracking your knuckles. Like it's it's gonna wind up again because your body is under tension. And so the second it's the, I mean the second you get off the table it's starting to wind back up again. You just might not feel it yet. And then eventually after enough time passes it winds up enough to the point that it can be popped again. But they don't fix anything. They don't, uh, chiropractors don't have like exit strategies. <laughs> or most of them don't anyway. That's what, what do they call it? I should know it. I used to be a nurse. Discharge planning. Yeah. Ah, oh, dang it. I hit the wrong button and lost my selection and then accidentally did something so I can't undo it. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, for for me it was a uh, what do you call him a uh, a craniosacral therapist that I met. That um, yeah, honestly changed my life. Um, I thought I was gonna die with this stuff, but it helped though. I know what you mean. As deep as modern medicine goes, it should be surprisingly naive about other aspects. Yeah. It's just they want you to think it's more complicated than it is. If you start, you know, treating your body as strictly like you would a sack of meat that has, you know, some parts in it that are harder than others, like, <laughs> you know, your bones, that's all it is. And so, like, as an experiment, like, like, Anywhere that you have or that I had tension, you can trace it to the opposite side normally. And pressure on the opposite side will relieve it because, again, it's a closed system. So you're just shortening the distance. I mean, this is not medical advice. I am not a doctor. Consult your physician. If you do this, your, your, your body might blow up. But, like, if you've got something sore, and it, it could be anything, Putting pressure on, like, imagine that you needed to take the spot that hurts and put it closer to the center of your body. Whatever that takes. You know, if it's this arm, then push on this, the other shoulder. You know, if it's like your IT band on it runs down the side of your leg, then like take your knee and your hip and, you know, from the backside, push them together. Like, if you start shortening that distance, your body will start relaxing. And, I, and that's why, like, things like, uh, what do you call it? Um, what are those things called? The med, the med, not bend balls, but, like, uh, lacrosse balls and stuff people roll around on. It's just, it's just shortening the distance. But, Uh, let's see. I fa I figured out it was the extent of what he was doing. It also explains why he told me about the, why the pain was coming back. It's trying to get me that head start, but he can only do so much for me. Yeah, if you're not doing exercises yourself to offset that stuff, um, it'll keep coming back. All right, so this um, robot thing, I think, looks a little too clean. 
And so I think I'm going to get like a rust, like texture or something maybe, and throw that on here and see what that looks like. You guys feel free to ask questions about coloring. <laughs> Anybody new here is like, what is this guy talking about? He's delusional. He's ranting and raving about something. I'm trying to give these, th these things of metal a little bit of an edge so it looks like they're They've got some thickness to them. What do they call that? A, like a chamfered edge or, or something like that. Probably saying it wrong. Man, if we're going on these long rants and convos in the chat, then we're having a good talk. <laughs> yeah, this is not like the usual time that I, that I stream at all. So like... But there's still some of y'all, same, my same people keep showing up. So I don't know when y'all sleep. <laughs> it's the same time I do, I guess. Uh, da, 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 da. What am we doing? We're getting close on this guy. I'm also like not doing it like perfectly. Like I'm leaving parts of it that are like, you know, so it feels like it's scuffed up around the edges maybe. And then, and then we'll do, uh, we'll do what do you call it? We'll do that rust thing. I think that'll look cool. And oh, we got some some bugs, some locusts. That's from uh, was that resonant? What do they look like? I need to see what those things look like. I want to make sure we get those right. Oh, they were like very famously yellowy green. I remember that now, which I remember, but these aren't, I want to make them yellower, yellower. Is that a word? Plus they'll stand out <laughs> with some yellow. You know, I said these are locusts, but they're like, they're what, cicadas, technically, right? We called them locusts. I think we were wrong, though. We're starting to try coloring again, so I feel like a total noob. I don't even know what to ask. I feel so bewildered. <laughs> yeah, this is... I don't know, it's one of the hardest... To me, it's one of the hardest things to talk about. Like, it's like the detailing stage. You know what I mean? It's like, well, we're adding details, and uh, we're adding details. Uh, But but for for me this this stage is more like uh, getting the the textures of things to look different more than I mean I'm doing a little bit of color just regular old coloring here but getting um, 
you know, making sure that like his helmet doesn't feel like, you know, that guy's skull, <laughs> you know. I'm making a piece that I penciled in Clip Studio Paint. I'm making digitally for the first time. CSP is amazing. Awesome. I will be drawing my own book soon. And yeah, I will be using Clip Studio. I didn't do her boots at all. What color are those? Yeah. And this character is very slick lasso-y stuff, so we're going to continue that. This piece is a little different. Like, it's intentionally meant to have different coloring styles within the same thing. Oh, that's why that's not working. I was like, why is that doing that? Why is that not showing? Oh, you know what? I did something weird with the layer. Yeah, let's get rid of that. That's what color her foot is. And that red, sorry, I'm, I'm fixing a mistake here I made earlier. There we go. There's a red overlay over, over all the base colors. And so uh, even though um, it's going to look like I'm using one color, you're going to see, uh, you know, different colors underneath that brush. It's really not bright enough. Mm, I'm thinking. Yeah, that's better. We're looking forward to your book. Looking amazing, Kurt. I found out about Control Shift Drag and CSP to jump to specific layers. I found out about Control plus Shift, click and drag to jump to specific layers. Ooh. That's it's selecting everything. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing wrong. How does that work? I don't quite follow that one. What was I doing? We got those done. Let's make one of these. Let's make these leaves a little bit of different colors. I'm just going to the base color underneath at the bottom. Uh, do I use an articulated arm uh, on my tablet? Yes, I do. 
All right, I'm gonna find a rush, a uh, rush, a rust texture. And let's see, oh, that is nice. Can I use that? Let's see, tools. So here's how I find textures. I, I go to Google, hold on. Let me do this in, uh, let me show this to y'all in, there we go. Do that, hide that, and do that. All right, sorry if I'm blinding, good grief. So uh, we search for rust texture, and then, and then we go to images. Then we go to tools and size and make it large. It's gonna get rid of all the 200 by 300 textures in there. And then usage rights go to creative commons. And now we have a bunch of nice rust textures to pick from. Most of these are free. I think some of these might not be. Um, I like that. Can we use that? What is this? Uh, this is a, this file is made available under blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we can use this. So, original file. That's big. Probably doesn't have to be that big for this, but for this, I like to go, we ought to go big. And then, uh, let's see, let's put this under everything else. And not everything, because I've got normal layers in here. Uh, where did it go? There we go. Like you disappeared. All right, let's get this uh, in the ballpark here. This doesn't. Uh, let's see. Right about. Yeah, you know, if I wanted to be. No, it's different enough. It's not going to matter. All right, so let's put this in there. And now I'm going to select all of the areas that I want it to appear on, which are all of these thingies and that thingy and that thingy. I think that's all the thingies. Yes. And hit the mask button. And I'm going to set this to... Let's start with overlay and see what it looks like. And see how much... It's not really darkening. Or... It is darkening a little, maybe. I usually strip some color out of it, too. But I really kind of like those oranges in there. It works with everything else. And it is currently not on top of... I did some coloring on top on there, so I need to actually put this... That looks like more like I expected it to look. I did more overpainting on this than I thought. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We're first going to lower the opacity on this a little bit. And I'm going to brighten it a little bit. And right now, it's all like equally applied everywhere, which is not what we want. So on that mask, I'm gonna go in all the places that I don't want it to be, and I'm gonna paint it out, mostly. <laughs> I'm using a textury brush to do this, so that even uh, we're adding texture to the texture. Um, I don't really want it too much in the shadow areas. You don't really see texture very much in the shadows or anything really bright for that matter. Not 
really doing as much up here. I'm letting a lot of that light kind of come through. And then even in the places where I do want it, like I'm still going to like scuff it up a little bit. Yeah, these really bright areas, I don't really want it as much on those places. Or at just angles that are mostly in shadow. And if I wanted to be really technical about this, like you could like perspective warp this stuff, you know, or whatever. Um, I'm not really that I'm not that worried about it. <laughs> this this texture is random enough that it doesn't. It's if it was the texture was really uniform, like all straight lines, I'd I'd have to you know would would massage that a little bit better. But um, dur, 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 dur. now it looks like a scuffed up robot. <laughs> what type? I don't know. I've got an Ergotron something or other. It's like the nice Ergotron one that's double articulated it rotates and everything not that I need to rotate it <laughs> um, either click or drag I guess drag is useful for coloring but control shift to click on highlights to jump to the highlight layer yeah as I've said it, I've, it is bleh, sorry I can't talk I've said it many times, but thank you for all of your videos. I learned loads from them. I am working on two projects and waiting for two others to start. Your breakdowns have helped me a lot. That's awesome, Dennis. Thanks a lot for coming by, man. I appreciate it. That works so well. That's actually cool. Yeah, I, I think it is too. It works really well. Um, tell you what I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to take a quick break. This is very close, I think, to being done uh, for my main part, but I still need to do the paper that they're busting out of. We're going to paint that up, and and we get to draw the paper on the other side. Bonus. So uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Let me write that down in case anybody pops in here and is like, what, what is going on in here? BRB. But yeah, yeah, and congratulations, Dennis. I really want to see you and David Finch do a collab again. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I'm all for it. All righty. So, I don't think we really need this anymore. I'm going to close that one. And... Let's see. 
I'm curious how much memory Clip Studio is using at the moment. Because I just realized this file is enormous. 9,600 square by 600. I mean, it is going to be painted at like 8 feet, but... And that's probably overkill, <laughs> but but I don't want to. There's no point in me uh, shrinking that. Let's see. Clip Studio is using. It's less than I thought. Three gigs. I did think it would be like twenty, <laughs> especially with all the. This actually doesn't have a ton of layers, but um, all right. Is there anything I've said I was going to do that I haven't done that somebody's waiting on me to do? I feel like it's one of those streams. Um, tell you what, let's do some of this paper. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get too fancy with this paper. Uh, whoops, let's see. I'm going to test in colors out here for a second. If you don't know what color to use, throw a color down and then shift it around until you find the color you like. It's my super professional method of doing this. I kind of like the green. I think the green works. I want to do, I don't know if we want to get that fancy with it. We'll put, I think we're going to put reflective lights in the, <laughs> in the paper. Or at least not that much of it. Uh, yeah, I think this needs to have big, soft uh, feel to it, maybe. Uh, I need to remember to come to next year's Washington Summer Con. Cool. I'm doing a time lapse in Clip Studio and it says export failed. I don't know what that is. I haven't seen that one. I'm kind of just trying to eyeball where there might be some shadows on this thing. I don't, I'm not really worried about them being perfect or anything, but... In the ballpark. Thanks for the back advice, no problem. Anytime. Does that turn under, or do we want to say, yeah, maybe not quite that much. Sorry, you guys catch that? 
<laughs> the half thought that came out of my head there. No, I just I was thinking about this. Uh, we need to see more of the paper than not here. I think. And we'll make it look like her foot is resting on it. Maybe. What's the best brush for ink splatter in CSP? Um, I don't, I, I, I've got, uh, I think mine came from Frendon, but there's probably, I mean, there's decent ones on the store too, I've noticed. So whatever, you know, whatever cranks your tractor. Yeah, there's a lot of them. I, I didn't even really know about the asset store for Clip until after I'd had it for a while. And I, and the few times that I've gone in there to find something, there's always so much cool stuff. Alrighty. So, Tim roughed in... Let's see, where is it? Nope. That's not it either. Tim had roughed in some, uh, what, the, what he wants the top side of this paper to look like. Basically, the paper they're tearing out of, he wants that on this side also. And I think, did I fill that with black? I think I did. Yeah, I just, I want to be able to, uh, I want to see against the black a little bit better. So I'm going to temporarily change that. Uh, we'll change that back later. And let me see if I can find. Ba -doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. There it is. CSP store is a gold mine of assets. Yes, it is. It definitely is. Uh, welcome to everybody that is just now joining us. I'm currently in the process of... looking at some reference for some torn paper. Mm -mm. Oh, and there's some shadows on that also. Maybe that wasn't black to begin with. All right, let's see here. Do some of that. Some of that. And let me go ahead and fill this in with a color. And where do we want to do this? We'll do this up here. Paper. There we go. And that way we can just use the lasso to cut around or whatever. And I'm sort of trying to uh, create basically a frame. Um, bulking it up a little bit around the, the head so that you get like uh, 
I don't know, a good rule of thumb, I think, is like, like on this, I want to kind of draw focus to his head. Imagine just putting, making it three wide. You know what I mean? Like, like his, that's kind of where his shoulder is here. So like his shoulder is kind of an empty space. I want to create about as much empty space right there. And that's what, that's the reason for doing that, like that. Uh, Aqua, that's the set I'm inking with. The splatter is too chunky. Yeah, I don't know. It really is a, a mostly a personal preference there. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I forgot to go up and close this off. All right. So I got to redo that. Let's just redo all that. Rookie mistake. There we go. And we don't need any of this to be white. I actually like it. All right, and let's make this dark again. Mm, where's that layer? Oh, it's right there. There we go. I like it. All right, so let's grab that shadow color. And we're not going to see quite as much of it over here. But uh, I'll kind of do it around this edge. Oh, we can do like a folded up little section here. Maybe. Does that work? Doing too much. Yeah, I should probably introduce some of that a little other place too. <clears throat> I keep changing the size and angle to make it less chunky. Oh yeah, we were talking about the asset store. Like I found like a, there's a really cool like lightning brush that uh that I really like a lot I mean, it's, it's strictly one of those special effects brushes and if I show it of course there is it'll, it'll uh you guys will love it uh where is it at it's uh I needed a good one for uh Christopher Chaos, where is that? Oh, Lightning Glow, yeah. Yeah, look at this thing. This is really cool stuff, and it depends on, like, however you build the brush. Of course, it changes the feeling of it, but... Like, it's just, it does cool, cool lightning. It's very, it feels very random. I don't really have a use for that here, I don't think. <laughs> uh, tell you what I'm noticing. I think it would help to have... Uh, let's see, where are we? So, the middle of the... Oh, I'm still in the lighting brush. On the In the middle of the canvas, there's sort of like, he's here... And this is all dark, and this is dark, and this is all pretty dark. And 
and I don't think the top of this hand is quite light enough. Like it needs to reflect more light, and that'll create basically a, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? A bit more of a frame for what's happening here in the middle. So I'm just going to select, I messed that up, hold on, there we go. I'm going to select the tops of all of these things. They're not flatted separately is why I had to pick it that way. And then we'll get rid of everything around it. Do, 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 do. work that did there we go and then uh, I don't want to lose the texture on top so I'm gonna get a brush that's pretty bright but just not uh, not use very much of it and that it also it helps to make the hand look more three-dimensional too because anytime you have like these two planes here uh, this one here. Why can't I draw anywhere? Oh, because I've got a selection still. <laughs> because the software did what I asked. Like that plane versus that plane are two different angles. Like that plane and that plane are two different angles. So every time you have a plane shift, realistically, you're probably going to shift colors too. Uh, if you don't at all, then uh, it tends to... Uh, uh, flatten those things a little bit, you know? All right, where were we? Paper. We are almost done with the paper. texture oh that actually looks that works that really works for looking like paper so let's let's do more of that we don't really need a ton of that though do we like this how do I want to do this maybe if we frame his eyes a little bit like that and then like that yeah 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 that I, I'm, I'm sorry I never I never tried this before it looks a lot like paper <laughs> Oh, whoops, I don't need. There we go. Whoops. Having the character's foot interact with the paper was cool. Thank you, thank you. Talking about what right here, yeah. Um, yeah. Anytime you get a, a chance to uh, have something uh, appear to make contact, that that does a lot to like. Um, 
make things look like they're touching. Uh, and I realize that's kind of an obvious thing to, to put it that way. But <laughs> like those, those contact shadows go a long way is the point that I'm trying to make here. Um, all right, let's see. Do we want like a papery texture on that? Do I need a paper texture on that? I don't think it needs it. I want to see what it looks like with it. So we're going to select the paper. And remove everything I didn't mean to select. <laughs> I think that's all that stuff. Is that everything? Yeah. And then down here. And again, remove what I didn't mean to select. So now we only have uh, the, uh, the paper selected. And now I'm going to go get uh, some handy dandy textury. What do I have? Do I have? Oh, that might work. Sorry, I'm blinding anybody. Oh, that almost looks like a canvas. Well, that's cool. Maybe we'll try that. Uh, we're going to control C that. We're going to go over here and control V that on a new layer and make it big. Oh, yeah, clip's gonna take a while to resize. This file is enormous. It's working, looks like paper. Excellent. Try a uh, old multiply mode. Oh man, that looks good everywhere, <laughs> but I'm not going to use it everywhere. Um, I'm going to, is it, so am I still, am my selection still selected or did I deselect it? Oh man, I deselected my selection at some point. Let's try that again. Don't need that. And that. Was that all the paper? Yeah, that's all the paper. And just hit the mask button, which will shrink that selection down to too much stuff. Let's see, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. That'll do it. So now it shouldn't be showing up on the characters, and it's not, and it is showing up over here. And because I used, this is actually a black color back here, so I need to fix all of that that's splashing over. I guess I could just control click. No, I made that. That's not in the inks. I can't control click the inks that I <laughs> that I just drew. <laughs> oh man. So what is wrong with this texture? It's equally everywhere, which I don't want. I'm wondering, does overlay fix that? Overlay makes it much brighter. Which I don't want. And if you lower the opacity too much, that doesn't do it. What's hard light do? That's not it. Mm -mm -mm. Let's put it back on multiply. And I'm going to very, very subtly paint this away a little bit on the shadow side. I don't want it to be quite as uh prominent in the shadow
I'm not erasing it completely, but I'm just I'm knocking it back a little bit. I am hungry. I'm just realizing I haven't eaten in a while. Uh, what size of an image do you think is good for a comic page? I always think mine are too small, but I have a dumb fear of filling up my laptop with image files. Well, you need to, um, you need to make them big enough so that they print okay, which is, um, I mean, you can, you can just Google comic book page templates, but, uh, I mean, most people draw... You know, it's roughly 11 by 17. You know. three, 400 DPI. Something like that. Alright. We're getting close. We're getting close, people. How much does white show up on this paper? <laughs> I'm going to see if I need to add any. I don't really think uh, adding white is going to do a whole lot, but I can brush in a little bit. Trying to rough up this paper edge a little bit because I did it with a lasso and it looks a little too cool, a little too clean. I mean, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? I mean, Every time I think this is about done, I'm like, how many thousands of people are going to see this thing in conventions and posters, probably likely, and uh, t-shirts, probably, and all of that stuff. And then I'm like, yeah, you better keep going. <laughs> you better keep going. His inks already have a little bit of an edge to him, so I'm not worried about that. Um, I think I want to use a little bit of blue and push this leg back a little bit. Do the same thing up here. Not quite as much. So anywhere that I can like create depth, I'm, I'm kind of just very uh, broadly going for that right now. Excuse me, another great nugget. Plane shift tends to shift in color as well. Yes. <laughs> Since it's being printed up big, all that detail is going to impress a lot of people. I hope so. That's that's kind of my theory. It's like, man, somebody's going to want to get, some artist is going to walk up and be like, there's somebody spent a lot of time here. Oh, uh, man. This is one of those things, though. Man, we could spend, like, the rest of this night into tomorrow adding detail if we wanted to. But uh, this one, uh, Tim is going to murder me if, if I don't turn this in probably uh, in the morning. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I'm just looking for anything that I feel like could use something. <laughs> That's all.
looking awesome. I'm I'm happy with this man. Like I really feel like I leveled up on this one if I'm allowed to say that myself. <laughs> like I don't know, like something clicked and, and it was like, oh, I get what I need to do here. But I don't know. I, I'm 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 having a I'm gonna have to figure out and uh, make some notes and articulate some of this stuff to myself over the next couple of weeks. But then I, I'm I'm excited about a whole bunch of new tutorials probably. That uh, I was planning on anyway, but after talking with Tim today, actually, I'm like, you know what? I need to get on that because I talked about some of it with him, and he's like, yeah, you need to do, you need to talk about that. <laughs> oh, you know what? I bet that's her skin. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Probably so. And I'm going to shift the red on the, uh, on the, the shoulders. I think I want to rein in a little bit. Just taking the saturation down. Um, if you kind of think about it, it's hard for white anything to show something really, really saturated. Unless it's, um... Uh, You know, unless you're doing it for creative purposes. And I, it's, that started off as a design graphic choice, but I think that I, uh, I need to turn that down. Basically anywhere that I want more of the local color to come through i'm just lowering the saturation so if you miss all of this earlier like so here's the base colors for all the characters above that there is a it's just a red hard light layer this is actually interesting we should look through this um <laughs> there's a red hard light layer that just has a mask on it and so without the mask everything turns red and then turn the mask on and i'm just revealing basically uh, what's underneath and then that's just a normal layer and that's an overlay layer which has since been covered up I don't think any of that is actually shown in the thing anymore um, because of that layer so yeah we can is there anything else on that layer no we can delete that He's somehow creepier without lines. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. And uh, let's see, what is this? Another normal layer, which is what I've been working on most of the day. Um, this is definitely the most detailed thing that I've ever done. Because most of the time, if you turn the inks off on my work, you, you can barely tell what's happening going on. <laughs> this is interesting, though. I haven't looked at this stuff in a while. On a painting like this, ever. It almost feels like a painting at this point. This face still works, sort of. Yeah, who needs art? Who needs line artist? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, let's see, what else is in here? Uh, oh, this is that overlay layer that's had the texture on it. I gotta say, this looks good. The texture looks good. Uh, we got the paper, which has <laughs> which has some random painting on it. And uh, the rest of this, yeah, there's really not much to the rest of this. Um, so is there anywhere that Little Shot is, he's too pink. He's still too pink. Hold on. Again, I'm just going to turn the saturation down on that level a little bit. On that layer that's redifying everything. I don't think we need that. I, I could shift that a little too. Oh, and I didn't get his camera. His camera is that color. There we go. Crisis averted. 
Is that wrong? I'm also going to all the way around, like when you have spheres that are lit, um, very, very often, if there's any, I mean, if there's any light around the edge at all, um, it's going to wrap around the edge almost regardless of your lighting setup. <laughs> like there's when it's a round surface. And so that'll go a little bit to uh, help him look like he's a sphere, or not a sphere, but a, yeah, a sphere. Ooh, we're a long way from white on him, by the way. <laughs> I just realized you can go a lot brighter there. So yeah, let's do some of that. I'm having breakfast as I'm watching this. Where where are you at, uh, Lily? Having breakfast. Will this eventually be posted somewhere? Uh, it will. I will allow. Vault will reveal this at some point officially. And then it will probably be a lot of merch and stuff too. Hopefully. I love this entire piece turned out so well. I'm I'm super happy with how it turned out. I really am. Do you turn your work to black and white to check the values throughout your process? I, I used to. I used to do more of it when it was harder for me to see. Um, but I kind of feel like I've I don't need it anymore, uh, honestly. But what he's talking about is if you put a, a color mode layer uh what am i trying to say a blending mode <laughs> a layer set to color on the blending mode where you got multiply normal all that stuff set it to color and then make it black or gray or white or whatever and what you'll get is uh basically uh, a black and white version um of of your of your deal you know what i mean and so Everything that's, uh, yeah, this is kind of doing what I expected it to do. Um, now, now the thing about this, th there is a limitation with this. Like in this view, I would say, let me blow this up. In this view, I would say that the edge of like uh, Will here and this robot, no robot, this <laughs> demon, whatever this is. Sorry, I don't know this character. Um, like they don't read as clearly as you know, say obviously like that edge where the uh, bog monster is up against the white, um, but this is only showing you value. Okay, it's not showing you hues or saturation levels or anything like that. So if you're making those separations another way, like in this case with the hues, <laughs> uh, the, the 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 front here is very red and the background is very blue, um, and so they're all going to really pop against uh, that pretty hard. I just realized I want this to be blue. Is that flatted separately? Ooh, it is. Let's begin the colorist revolution against line artist down <laughs> with the line artist. Yeah, I, yeah, maybe, maybe not, but yeah, no, I get your point. No, I was kidding around earlier about when I turn the line layer off, we don't that we don't need line artists anymore. But now we do. I'm also looking for places where like where would they well this background was blue. <laughs> Or this background was yellow when I did this highlight. So how about we make it blue? And 
We gotta change his hair too while we're at it. Yeah, we're gonna do. I'm gonna do one more quick pass along this. I'm like, all right, let's imagine that some artist that I really like comes up to the vault boot, and I'm like, wow, I wonder how detailed this guy got. And uh, I'm working for that guy now. <laughs> I think that, I think that's teeth, or is that the background? Ah, uh, you shouldn't see teeth. I think that's the background. Um, do, 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 do. I'm also going to. I don't do a lot of this kind of thing at all, but I'm going to get on top of the lines here. because I want this to read a little bit more strongly and I don't want to make the thing behind it any darker or the rest of this any lighter. Because his hand is kind of thin. And so the more I can do to bring that forward will work. And we'll get right at just the right angles. We'll do some white in here. Because again, he just crawled out of the swamp, guys. He just crawled out of this bog. When reading Blue Flame, I can hear your voice, LOL, especially Blue Flame number seven cover. I was remembering what show I was watching while drawing something. That's awesome, Dennis. Very cool. This whole thing looks detailed and amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it, guys. I also want to look, uh, this is meant to, this is rope. And so I'm adding a little bit of like stuff on top here. To make it look like it's a little hairy or something. Uh, I mean, we really could like I could do. I could do a video on nothing but <laughs> all all of the texture on this guy and all of this stuff. This is going to be an epic video, by the way. It's going to be long because <laughs> there's so much in this I want to talk about. But I'll but I'll have to wait until uh, I'll have to wait until uh, Vault puts it out. I'm not going to put on any of my social media until they clear it. He is nasty. Let me just tell you. All right. What else? What else? What else? He is done. We're going to say overcooked. <laughs> Not overcooked. Well done, hopefully. How about under the lines? I think I've been working <laughs> above them. I guess it matters that much. Um, ooh, her buttons are probably not that color. You know you got a good piece when like I I, I just I don't even that's like do I have to stop? <laughs> Unfortunately, I do at some point. But yeah, Nate just killed it on this. A lot of this again. I said this last time. I'm gonna say again. A lot of these are based on the uh, the, the 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 
uh, covers from these books that were drawn by other artists as well. So, and and so, uh, but yeah, Nate Nate just killed this though. So good. And I don't think I'm looking for places that might need to be like a shine or a glow or something, but I don't. There's not. A, I'm not like crazy about overdoing that kind of stuff anyway, but I don't really see anything uh, too insane that needs to be uh, any special effects or anything. What I would call special effects, I guess. Come on, brush. I like this character. I don't know much about him, but I want to read whatever book he's in. It looks like he's up to no good. Uh, do we want to make this bud look like fresh blood <laughs> or dried blood? Maybe he just... Do I want to do that? Give it a little thickness? I'm not doing it everywhere. But yeah, that looks cool enough. I'm still not happy with these legs. <laughs> Worked on them way earlier. That looks a little bit better. I, t I tend to forget a lot things like uh, like cast shadows. It's easy to forget cast shadows. At least for me. It's one of those things that I look and look and look and like, why does this look wrong? Why does this look wrong? It's like, oh yeah, it needs cast shadow. I mean, that's the, the shadow of something being cast on something else. If that wasn't clear. Speaking of blue flame, I did say I was going to hide a blue flame in here somewhere. <laughs> I need to find a spot for it. Blue Flames name another book that I work on with them. That character's not in here. There's a lot of characters aren't here. They have a lot of books. I'm not upset about it. I'm really not. But no, I do want to hide a flame in here. Just this tiniest little blue flame. So if anybody happens to walk up in this, what's that little blue flame there? They'll go, oh, well, we've got this book. <laughs> Where can I hide it? Can we hide it right there? That kind of looks like a flame already. I think we could. If it's right in the middle though, it would really stand out. <laughs> but it's in the background. This is this is the plot. This is the spot. Do I want to do the I don't want to do like the blue flame logo. Or would we want to do the blue flame logo? I think we do. <laughs> I've already told Tim I was going to do this, by the way. So if anybody's like, ooh, but yeah, I told him. And he's like, go for it. <laughs> but it really is a perfect spot for it. So I just need to find... Uh, What 
book. What cover did I do? Oh, that logo was front and center. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I got to find that cover real quick. I'm going to take it right off an old cover. <laughs> that number seven? I don't remember the name, the numbers. Nope. And it's not eight. And it's not nine. I had to put all these in separate folders, didn't I? <laughs> so I've got to click into each one. It's not six or five. We're getting there. It's, we're getting down to the last few covers. It can only be so many of them. Well, that had to be a variant cover that I don't even remember. Hold on. Oh, it's 10. It's the last issue. Of course it is. Only one I didn't look at. All right. So let me get the one with all the layers. I might need it. All right, sorry, I'm blocking all the spam that just came in. Tim, you're you're still up? Oh, you're on the you're on the other coast, right? Or that's so funny. Well, thanks a lot for coming by, man. What do you think? Is this going okay for you? <laughs> I'm really happy with it, man. I'm really happy with it. But uh, yeah, there's a nice little blue flame logo. I lost my pencil. There it is. Blocked and reported a spammer. Oh, thank you. That, yeah, the background's blue. Yeah, it's serendipitous, man. It's 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 uh let me just do this. Do, do, do. Wrong one. Where am I? Right here. All right. And control V. Is that what that was? Yeah. And I'll put it in. Uh, I think if we change the blending mode to. Let's see. Green? Yeah, so that's going to hide. Now I just need to place it. Oh, this is not a smart object, is it? So, if, I, and I want it to read, but I don't want it to stand out. I really don't want it to stand out very much. Uh, if I put it right in the middle, it is. And let's see. Let's get rid of all of that. I'm going to use a soft edge on that so I keep that little starry thing going on in there. And let's just mask the rest of that off. I already did that. That didn't, that didn't, that didn't do what I expected it to do. Hold on. It's getting late. <laughs> what, what am I doing? Uh, let's delete the mask and then put it back on. Okay, now it is good. We're good. And it's a little too strong, <laughs> so I'm going to knock it back. I think it stands out the perfect amount, <laughs> which is not very much. All right, let's see. Uh, maybe try it negative, like darker instead of lighter. Might be more subtle. 
that's true actually but i it would also invert the symbol i don't know if that would let me see what happens yeah i don't know i don't know if there's going to be a better option than what what i had it on cuz i i don't uh, i really don't want this thing to glow dodge what is it Ooh. some wacky colors in here oh that's nice add glow yeah that is way too strong good grief that is a strong effect incredible looks like the moon behind red and it's it kind of does yeah <laughs> Not negative, but yeah, instead of going like it, yeah, I, I, I figured out what you meant. Yeah, yeah, I think that's perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything else? I think, let's, uh, we're, we're, we're so close. We're getting close. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a, the slightest little bit of a glow. I'm also, Tim, since you're here, I'm going to ask you a question. The, um, how, or, or how much uh, uh, blood do we want on this? Like I kind of added this blood and I realized afterward, I'm like, is that too much <laughs> for, for, you know, I don't want to freak a kid out or anything. But if it's not, I also would like, you know, we could bloody the axe up a little bit too. But, uh, but yeah, I don't know if we, you know, I don't know how far far we want to push push the blood. Uh, but we got a bog monster on here. A perfect amount. All right. So let me see what this looks like then. Oh, his eyes glow. I forgot axe's eyes glow. All right. Let's make the eyes glow. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's get rid of, I don't need that strong of an effect here. That is not that color. And then right in the center, go white. And that's how you do a glowing eyeball. Uh, how about Gina from Shadow Service want to give her clutched fists a little black magic glowing power? Yeah, what is, let's see what she looks like. Sorry. <laughs> what does it look like? I can't remember. Oh, I did, I did a bunch of covers for that, too. I forgot. I was about to Google it. I'm like, Kurt, you worked on those books. <laughs> I don't know if her powers are glowing on any of those books, but it'll be faster for me to Google it <laughs> than find my cover, probably. Shadow Service, Vault Comics, Images. It's like pinkish purple, right? Or a, a lot of red, too. Are there any interior? I don't think I ever saw this cover with uh, the dress on it, by the way. I just came across, this is a, a cover I did for Shadow Service. It looks great. I it, it, like the, the logo is like the perfect amount of overlapped and everything. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, that was a cool book. Uh, I was trying to find a shot of her using like her powers. Like, are, are they like more like is it just glowing or lightning? Like, I really want to, I want to get this right. Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm still looking around.
Oh, I did do a cover. It's just Orange Fire. Okay. Yeah, we can do some Orange Fire. Where did my pen stylus go? There we go. I don't know if it's always Orange Fire, but I'll, I'll do this on a separate layer. Check your colors you did with Rebecca. 3B. Yeah, I think that's the one I just found. No, that's four. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't remember if I saw that one either. Here's the reference I'm looking at. This is like a washed out terrible JPEG off the internet. It does it looks better in print, but <laughs> but yeah, it's it's like a, it's it's fiery stuff. So uh let's see. When was the last time I drew a special effect? It's been a while. Let's do... I would normally do this in a pencil first, so why don't I do it in pencil first? <laughs> I am so smart. Thinking something like that on the inside. Where do we want this to go? Can we, Tim? We have to burn the paper, man. It has to. The paper has got to be charred, right? <laughs> of course it does. Of course it does. Like, she's standing there like, yeah. Oh, I totally forgot I'm standing by this paper. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Hold on. Let's see if we can. I keep This, this is why we sketch. I was going to do this with a lasso. And I'm like, no, don't do it. <laughs> Something like that. I don't know why the flame would not go anywhere other than straight up. <laughs> All right, so I think we can. We'll see how many tries this takes me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tim, did you have the glow in mind when working on it, or did you just think of it? <laughs> oh, no, I left the detail out of the mock-up. My bad, but Kurt always elevates everything he does. Oh, it's very nice. So I'm just trying to come, come standard here. All right. Uh, and then here... Hmm, you know what I just realized I did? Well, I'll redo it. That's fine. It would be probably easier to paint it anyway. All right, so let's get rid of that. Whoops. Is there anything else I'm about to delete? <laughs> I have a bad habit of... Oh, yeah, those, uh, those glows. Tell you what, I'm going to make a new layer and just fill it with a color so I can use that as a selection and get rid of this part and then let's see let's start with an orange base and then let me see what looks cool i don't play with a lot of these blending modes but i'm probably just going to paint this uh Yeah, probably. 
so. Mm, I don't like it looks like a sigh I, I need to get rid of this thing it, it you know it's like you know what a sigh is I'm talking to a bunch of nerds in here um, <laughs> when I want to get rid of that part there we go that's a little bit better I think this, this thing might be super big Sorry to blind you if you're close to your computer. I'm trying to figure out, do I want to... What am I doing? <laughs> that hard light's not going to cut through that ink, though. I don't need to use that mode at all. I'm just going to do this on a normal layer like I originally intended. No, that's going to... I'm thinking. Screen mode will be better. Yeah. I don't want to like completely lose all of this detail in here so um, what I'm gonna do is just go over some of it I don't know if I like this or not. This is too clean uh, of an edge for my taste right now. Hold on. Like she's too realistic. And the, and the fire, like I get it's a totally design thing, but I think uh, I want this to be a little bit softer. And am I, would I be able to make this look like her hand is actually glowing? Is that a thing that it happened in that book? <laughs> No wonder I was like, why does this? I'm like, I only just like start over. Like, I, I really screwed that up. I don't need, actually, I don't have to start over. Let me just hard light that layer. Yeah. And merge that down. This is what I thought I was doing the whole time. I was like, why does this look weird? <laughs> Because you made it weird, Kurt. That's why. Doesn't have to be story accurate. Yeah. Awesome. It'll be close anyway. <laughs>
Looking great. All right, good. Yeah, I feel like it. I, I it bailed out there right at the last second when I realized what I was doing wrong. Um, so I'm gonna see if we can make it really look like this is like emanating from the inside. How would I do that? So we'd have to start really orange, which we can't really get much more saturated than that. And then yellow, almost like her skeleton itself is. glowing here. I don't know if that's what her powers look like, but this will look cool. <laughs> iron iron fist-ish sort of stuff here. Plus you can see the hand better. I'm back. I want. I'm just on a regular, uh, uh, no regular layer. Uh, a normal layer now. Which is probably where I should have started, but I've got bad habits of doing all that. And I'm using this white to sort of make sure her the silhouette on that works and comes through. This needs to wrap around her hand a little bit down here. And it's against the white paper anyway, so I, I don't think it's like drawing undue attention or anything. Um, I want to try one thing real quick. I don't think I can make that any more yellow. Yeah, I can. There's a, little, there's a little bit more yellow in it. But I think that yellow is a little bit much. That looks hot. <laughs> All right, so on the paper, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna, I'm not gonna char it up, or at least not very much, because I, I think it would, I don't know, I'm gonna try it. Uh, do, 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 where is it? It actually makes it read a little bit better, but I, hopefully it's not too much. <laughs> I didn't think I would. I do think it should at least glow a little bit or something. Or more of it should be on the paper. You liked it? <laughs> Dang it. Did I control Z too already? All right, all right. We'll put it back.
Let's cool it out too. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little bit in there. We'll know it's there. You know what it is. I, I think it was a little too strong before, but we'll do a little bit. And then overall on the paper, why well, have weights? All of this was just for that fire, and I've ended up doing it all in normal mode at the end. <laughs> uh, what was I gonna do? Oh, let's I mean, use uh, uh yeah, there's an overlay layer there already. I just want to throw some glows on the fire and I'm going to get rid of this, not get rid of that blue, but I'm just going to, well, I don't know, I think I kind of like it the way it is. Maybe we'll do a real subtle. Uh, let's see, overlay. I'm just going to warm up this whole corner a little bit. And that should do the trick without having to render a bunch. Before, after, before, after. It's subtle. Don't need it in the background. Cool. Cool. I'm happy with it. All right. I really don't see much else here that is worth uh, tackling any more than it has been tackled. Can't wait to see this on the comp floor. Me neither, man. I hope I get to go to a show that you guys are at at some point and get to see it. I'll definitely see... Uh, I'm sure I'll see... you got to get a picture or something if, if I don't make it this year. But um, I tell you what. I think we're at the spot where I'm going to dump this very quickly into Photoshop and just make sure that I don't... Uh, Make sure this still looks okay. I am using the CMYK preview that is built into Clip, and so uh, I it's close enough that I've found that, uh, oh, you know what? I need to export that as PSD. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I really do like it. Um, it's probably one of, I think it might be one of my favorite things I've ever done. I feel like I learned a lot on it. It's got a little bit of everything, metal, special effects, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, a little bit of all of it. You know, you know, dang it, Tim, Tim and your ideas. Hold on one second. <laughs> I can't, I can't not do this now. Hold on, where is it at? Uh, normal layer, here we go. Uh, so freaking cool. Yeah, I think so too, guys. Thanks a lot, I appreciate it. I'm gonna put a little bit of this flame. If I've, I've made, he, he's, he's wet, so he's reflecting everything, remember? He's gonna reflect a lot of light, and so we're gonna do a, just a little bit on this to make me feel better. It would definitely overpower all that blue that I added before. I'm doing my little Drew Struzen marks here that I learned from him. <laughs> yeah, what would happen if I didn't do this is the master what would happen if i didn't do this is every time i look at this cover for the rest of my life i would go dang i should have put i should have put that fire there <laughs> because i'm just that weird i'm just that weird ah it looks good it looks good it looks good i must say Yeah, 
Yeah, I think we could, uh, could we do a tutorial on everything with this? <laughs> with like everything? It's like fire, check. Wet, slimy swamp monsters. <laughs> monsters, check. Rusted metal, check. Burly guy with an axe. I mean, we've covered all the bases here. Now I feel better. Almost. <laughs> Just almost. It even gives us an excuse to like make these claws look like they're even sharper. Would make a great video. Yeah, I, pro I really probably should do uh, do a little tutorial like that because we definitely could. Sometimes with these group shots, it's like you wouldn't want to. Uh, I don't really like this glow very much. Um, you wouldn't want to make it look like they're actually in the scene together. But because people are different scales and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But it's just fun. Like th when you can tie them together like that, I think it's really fun. Um, again, I'm just going to, this is going to be very subtle. I don't want to go crazy with this, but we're probably too late there. <laughs> All right. Save as PSD. It usually fails the first time. I don't know why, but just in switching from a from clip to PSD, it'll be like, nope, couldn't save. Then I'll save it again, and it'll work. I don't know why my computer does that. <laughs> we'll see. This is a big file. Okay, that worked. So let's close that. Let's go to Photoshop. Let's open it back. Up, oh, is that it? This might be an old version. <laughs> I can't remember. No, it's not. Awesome. All right. Let's see. Why is that so big? Put that over there. Oh wow! I'm I I'm kind of shocked at how little that's changing. I'm going to say that, that clip CMYK preview is better than I thought, actually, because it's, yeah, it's, it honestly, it, it's, the CMYK is just shaving the harshest parts off of it. So it really, I think that works well. And you guys are seeing, yeah, it looks basically the same from your perspective. Uh, what was the last big work you did? Single work, the big X-Men one you did? Probably. That was probably the last one. Uh, there was uh, there was also a, a commission I did for a corporation that uh, that had a lot of spent a lot of time on it. Um, I missed some leaves. Mm, 
do I even have, I don't know if I even have great brushes in here. Uh, I just need, yeah, that'll work. All right, well, um, Tim, if you're still here, is there anything else on this that uh, needs to be tweaked? I'm realizing I did this subconsciously, <laughs> but uh, so most of the characters definitely lean red, but the greens are sort of, because I didn't want one you know, green character, obviously, like, that would stand out too much. And so, like, this guy... Oh, that's a slow brush. This guy... This guy and this guy all kind of lean green. And then she's got... There's blue, and then there's blue, and there's blue-ish. And they're, they're all sort of equally spread out. And I did not really think about that. Even this thing being blue. All right. I want to check the levels on this. I think it's probably fine. Yeah. Let it rip. All right. Should I sign this? I don't think Nathan signed it. Uh, so I'm not going to sign it, but I think... Um, where did I put that blue flame? Uh, in CMYK, that did almost disappear, so I'm going to bump that up a little bit more. There we go. All right. Saving it. Sending it. I'll send you the bill. <laughs> Thanks a lot for hanging out, Tim. And uh, I've got an action that's going to uh, uh, flatten all of this, convert it to CMYK, and it saves it to a folder. And, uh, Tim, if you get in here and realize that you need, like, some layers, then, uh, I mean, obviously not all of this, but I mean, like, big, big stuff, like the paper against the other part or whatever, I'll, I'll, I can, I can make that work if you need it. It'll take me a minute to make you a simplified version you can probably follow. <laughs> but, uh, let's save that one more time because I'm paranoid. And I'm going to save it under a different name because I'm super paranoid today. Yeah, Tim, you know, I, I sent you that that file, that panel that I was working on all day today. That was extremely difficult panel in another book. I lost that whole page today. Separate everything from the black background and we're good. Ah, okay. Let's do that then. Um, so you want that like on a transparency? Is that what we're doing? Let's see. Let's remove. This is a little rough around the edges in a few places, I think, but. I know you can deal with that. I dumped a full cover today. 
during an upload to the server. Um, yeah, man, I've never, I've never in my life lost a page of work ever. And it was one of, it was one of the most, um, obviously it was one of the busiest things that I ever did. Um, yeah, I was just sick. I was physically sick. And I hate redoing stuff too. I'm trying to figure out the best way to make this happen. Hold on. Uh, tell you what, let me, I don't know if this is, let me see. If I merge. Well, here you can kind of see what I mean. There's a little bit of, uh, well, that's got the paper in it still. I don't want to send you a mess. <laughs> Let me see. Okay. Can I delete that? No. I am so lost. Oh, oh there's my paper. I can turn delete that. Two for two weeks. Yeah, I, I've never done it. Like it's so it's yeah, it's ridiculous. Um there's some layer there's a little layer weirdness in here, but I don't think this is anything that I can't uh, we can get rid of here. I tell you what, I need to simplify this and do this in clip because it's been so long since I've done this in photo.